Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. Over the last couple of weeks I've put up my pack with me for Disneyland Paris video, my Disneyland Paris vlog and today is the last video in this trilogy which is my haul from the trip. If this is your first time to my channel then hi my name's Roisin. When I'm not doing travel vlogs I am on a no buy this year and that's generally what my content is about. It's about me trying to buy less, significantly less, in terms of really buying nothing, using up what I have and trying to get in control of my finances a little bit. So in the context of that, my rule for going on holiday this year whilst I was on my no buy was that I was allowed to buy souvenirs. So I was not allowed to buy things that I would generally buy on holiday, like fashion items, makeup items. It was very much sort of touristy items and that was what I was allowed to buy as a sort of memento of my trip without opening the gates for my holiday shopping to be a way of me buying things that I'm not meant to be buying when I'm on my no-buy. There's not maybe as much as there would have normally been if I had not been on a no-buy when I was on this trip. On the flip side of that, I really wasn't that impressed with the merchandise this time in Disneyland Paris. I felt it was really severely lacking. I don't know if that's because the 30th anniversary was maybe really impacted in terms of the planning and execution at the beginning by Covid. I did get some merchandise obviously which I'm going to show you. There's just not as much as there would usually be but let's get into what I did get. I got two items that were less things that I bought and more things that I got as such. Um, and the first one is this glass. I say glass, this is actually plastic. It's a plastic champagne flute. Um, and as you can see, well, in fact, I'll do a better cutaway. It's got the 30th anniversary logo, gold at the bottom that kind of gives way into being clear. This I actually got when we went to the Newport Bay Hotel and we had a glass of champagne and you got to keep the glass. So it was 15 euros, including keeping the glass, which was, I thought, amazing value for money. And I would really urge you, if you are taking a trip to Disneyland Paris, to go get that glass of champagne. I thought for 15 euros, and you're keeping the glass, like the actual champagne will be dreadful. Um, even though you're you're in France where these things are obviously much cheaper than they are when you're paying the import price for champagne uh, at home in the United Kingdom or whatever that is for you guys, if it's not France. But yeah, 15 euros and this champagne was excellent. And you got to keep the glass. So that was the first thing that I got for my souvenir pile. Then related to that, I also got this, which as you can see, I've not even taken out the plastic yet, so let me do that. So this is another drinking glass. You could only get this if you were getting the drink to go in this, but they gave me the drink just in a normal cup and then gave me this separately, hence why it's not been opened yet until I had filmed it. Um, but I really wanted this. I think it looks like a really good size of drink that you'll get in it. And yeah, and another third. I think everything I got actually is... 30th anniversary, apart from one thing, the majority of what I got is 30th anniversary related. So that was my drinking cup. It's got straw in the back and I'm very excited to start using this now. So those are the two things that I got that kind of came with things that I was buying anyway. So to get into the actual merchandise, I'd say there's really not a lot of it. Uh, I got the hand soap. So I'm sure if you are familiar with Disney at the moment, these soaps have really become quite a trend. Uh, so when you, you can see in the back, when you dispense the soap, it comes out in a Mickey head. So I already had one of these. I got one of these from my friend Lauren. She got it on shopdisney.co.uk. But obviously this one is the 30th anniversary packaging. So we got these and um, we both got them. These were actually on an offer. I think buy one, get one half price or something. So. We both got one of these and I'm going to pop this into my bathroom now that I filmed it. Now I used to be a really really big pin collector, I got probably a little bit too into pins for a while. I think I have a pin haul from one of my previous Walt Disney World trips which I will link up in the eye for you if you're into your pins. So I was already kind of thinking I need to like rein it in on the pins this time and really just get sort of significant ones. But I think even if I hadn't been thinking that I was again really a little bit underwhelmed by the pins. I think they're priced kind of wrongly for what they are in Disneyland Paris. I think they've just taken the dollar prices and put it into euros. That's not the same price point and I think they're probably a little bit too expensive for what they are. So I think as a result the pin trading in terms of like 
the low level pin trading like people who are just doing it as a hobby or on holiday or whatever that's not really taken off i have been to a pin trading night in disneyland paris when the real you know collectors came out and that was a very different vibe they obviously took it very 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 seriously and um, but i think the kind of the lighter more fun side of pin trading hasn't really taken off you know kids with their pocket money or whatever i don't think it's really taken off in disneyland paris so i didn't really think that there was the same level of choice of pins as a result of that. For the 30th anniversary, there was only one pin available. I think neither the start of the anniversary, there had been more, but obviously they hadn't made enough, so there was only one whilst we were there. And I feel like in terms of vlogs and things that I've watched, it's been that way for quite a while and there's been no sign of a restock. But I, I did get it and it's Mickey, which I'm happy with. It's not that I dislike this pin, but I was a little bit disappointed in the lack of choice. This is my 30th anniversary pin. In terms of anniversaries, I've now been in Disneyland Paris for their 15th, 20th, 25th and now their 30th. 15th was actually my first trip as an adult to Disneyland Paris. Not an adult, I was still in school, but you know, like not a little kid. Like old enough to kind of start to really understand you know, if you're if you're going to become a Disney person, I think, as an adult and get the magic out of it rather than just being like overwhelmed by it as a child because it's Disney. That was my first trip in that kind of headspace. I was in high school at that point. I think that was my first trip in a while. I didn't really know about pins. I wasn't really into pin collecting then. So I don't have a 15th anniversary pin, which kind of grates me a little bit. But I've got my 20th, 25th and now my 30th, so I am glad that I got the pin to continue in the collection. A traditional pin that I buy every time is a pin for the year that I'm there and on that trip. So again, I'm so sorry, I sound really negative in this video, but I was slightly disappointed. I wasn't really very impressed with the 2023 offerings and I don't think that's really at this point a Covid thing or anything. I think that is just, there's less interest in pins in Disneyland Paris, so there's not the same options but I did end up I got this I only saw this in the not the Sequoia Lodge the Hotel Cheyenne shop I saw it on the first night and I was like that's the nicest of the ones I've seen but we didn't have park tickets in the first day because we were arriving at like three in the afternoon so there wasn't really any point so we just did a wander around some of the different hotels and looked at the, the Disney Village shops and I thought I'll wait and see what I see in the parks there might be better ones and there wasn't so I actually I ended up having to go back to that shop because that was the only place I'd even seen this one which is the Chippendale or Tick and Tack as they are uh, at Disneyland Paris. So that is the, the 2023 pin that I ended up going for. In terms of pricing these are both yellow so I'm not sure what that kind of means really. And then the only sort of pin that I bought that wasn't 30th anniversary or uh, the year was this one. So this is a Hercules pin. It's Hercules and Meg. Meg is one of my favourite Disney women of all time. I think she's amazing. And there's never enough merchandise for Meg, which in fairness, is possibly a good thing, especially when I'm trying to be in a no-buy. Hercules, Hunchback and The Rescuers. Those are my three films that there is never enough merchandise for. Three of my favourite films. So when I do see, when I do get the opportunity to get something, um, especially if it's Meg as opposed to any of the other characters from Hercules, like Meg is the the main girl as far as I'm concerned, uh, I do have to get it. So I got that little pin and that was orange so I think that was maybe slightly less expensive than the other two. And then the last thing from Disneyland Paris was a pen. So this is the, the Meg pin and this are the only things that I've got that are not 30th anniversary or kind of dated merchandise. There was a pen set for the 30th anniversary and I think it was three pens for 15 euros or something. It was better value to buy the set but I really like the design of this one. So this was seven euros, it's got the price on it um, and it's just got the, the castle and you've got four colours. I actually hadn't taken a pen on holiday with me and then I needed one so technically it was a necessary purchase uh, but that is the one that I decided to get with the castle. So. That was my last Disneyland Paris item. So from there on to what I bought in Paris, which again, really isn't very much. I bought this egg. I already talked about this in my March budget video, my March money diary, um, because I took the money for this out of my budget rather than being like a free holiday purchase. This was from this brand, Comtesse du Barry, and it was an Easter egg. It had chocolate, can you see that? It had chocolate inside of it originally. On a side note, by the way, I am wearing Nars Audacious lipstick in the shade Bet, which is 
a beautiful colour, one of my favourites, but this formula is very slippy. So if I have lipstick in my teeth, I'm really sorry. It just moves about. But this is my egg. I think it's so, so beautiful. I bought that more as a, a decoration than for the chocolate inside. The chocolate was fine, but it opens up, so I'm going to don't quite know what, but I'm going to store something inside of it. It's not the easiest opening thing, so I don't want it to be something that I want access to all the time, but yeah, I'm going to put something inside it and then set it up there. So that is my egg. I just thought that was really, really pretty. Again, the other thing that I talked about in my March budget video, this SVR eye cream. So this is soothing eye cream, um, anti-itching for irritated eyelids. My eyes were very, very irritated. They didn't even like this at first. Now that they've calmed down a bit, I've been using this. I'm really enjoying it. It's um, just a really sort of basic, soothing, moisturising eye cream. It's not claiming to do anything for like fine lines or anything like that. When my eyes were already irritated, basically everything except actual eczema cream was just exacerbating the situation. Now that they've calmed down a bit, I've been using this and I've had no flare-ups because of this. So I'm not reacting to this, although I couldn't use this when they were already flared up, they didn't like anything when they were flared up. So um, I'm not counting that against this. I think this is probably still quite a good one if you've got sensitive skin or whatever, just as long as it's not actually kind of inflamed and broken the way that mine was. Enjoying it. It's a basic eye cream. There's not much more to say. Another sort of purchase that came with food, I got some macarons in Pierre Hermé. I got them in this little tin that has the Eiffel Tower on the top. So again, just kept the tin. The macarons were excellent um, and I'll probably try and use this for something much more easy to get in and out of than the eggs. So don't know what we'll use it for yet but I'll use it for something. And then the last thing that I bought in Paris were these hair vitamins. So if you've been following me for a while I was talking about the hair burst vitamins. I tried them. I got them back. My friends get married on Halloween and I started taking them the week before Halloween. So the very end of October and I got three months worth and I took them through the end of October, so mainly late November, December and the first three weeks of January. Um, and I kind of wasn't giving them credit, I think, for what they were doing. When I stopped taking them, when I ran out, I definitely noticed that my hair growth slowed down. So I decided I was going to get them again, but whilst we were away, I saw this pack. So these are from Phyto and these are the Faneer. Faneer, not quite sure. But basically they are strength, growth and volume supplements. These were 30 euros for four months. So two of these bottles, you take two a day, there's 60 capsules in the bottle. So I started taking these, well through away, I actually started taking them the day that I bought them in March. And if you guys remember when I was saying my eyes were really irritated, I think part of the problem was this fringe was about here. And it was constantly sticking into my eyes and because I've got hooded eyes as well my eyes were like rolling back and catching the hair in the socket so as you can imagine that was not helping anything but that's where my hair was for most of March and it was staying there for ages and then I started taking the vitamins and it's now here so it's still not long enough I still want this fringe to be I want to be able to tuck it behind my ear that's where I'm aiming to get it to but yeah I do think they've made quite a significant difference if you think about the fact that was going into my eye and it's now here. To be fair we're probably going on about six weeks now in comparison to how long it was taking and how long it was sticking around that area beforehand. I think it's definitely sped up the growth having taken those tablets and I feel like my hair just looks a little bit fuller and healthier as well. Um, so much so, so I looked them up when we got home and the RRP per bottle on those vitamins is £39. Now I did find them on Essential and Essential generally have some kind of a discount running pretty much all the time. So I don't think you'd need to actually pay £39 per bottle. And the thing to remember is per bottle you're getting two months, whereas the hair bursts are £25, but generally that's one month. So although it's more expensive up front, you are actually getting it's less per month, technically, if you buy the Phyto ones. But when I was in Nice, um, last last week, literally last week, oh, you, you know when you travel and then like as soon as you're back it feels like you were never away and it's it feels ages since the trip but it was not, it was last week. Um, so I was in Nice and Monaco last week uh, on a work trip, not a leisure trip sadly, but it was enjoyable and I did get time to go to a pharmacy and I picked up another 
set of these so uh, I don't have these on my beauty inventory and I haven't taken them out of my budget because this isn't a problem category for me I took the hair burst ones through to I was finished them hadn't bothered repurchasing and then got these the only reason I repurchased them in Nice before waiting for these to be done is because I have no idea when I'm going to be back in France and I think this first set I think was about 25 euros or something in I'm going to say Monoprix I think was maybe where I saw it the first time um, or maybe it, or was it City Farm I think it was City Farm where we got them in actually and it was about 25 euros and I got these in a pharmacy in Nice and I think they were about 28 euros for four months so 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 much cheaper to buy abroad so if you are heading to France this year at all um, and hair vitamins or something you're interested in these are worth trying to track down now I did see the same set far more expensive like I saw in um, I think in Gallery Lafayette it was 35 euros some of the pharmacies it was 40 odd euros I just kind of kept looking around to see where the best price was and I found it for 27 euros in or I think I think it was maybe like 27 euros and 90 cents or something but less than 30 euros basically um, in one of the pharmacies so if you've got the time to nip in and out of a few doesn't seem to be a regulated price but yeah, so I've got both of these kits for less than 30 euros. Sorry, I feel like that's really boring chat for anyone who's not into hair vitamins, but yeah, I definitely do think they've made quite a big difference in quite a short space of time, so very impressed with those. Um, and the last thing that I bought in Nice, really boringly, was some soap, which was in a nice tin. Bar of soap to go in the downstairs bathroom. Uh, not the most exciting. This is the olive oil one. Um, it's not the most exciting. They did have different smells, but the tin design was different depending on what smell you got. And I thought the soap's going to get used up, but the tin I will keep. So I picked it based on the tin that I liked the most, which was this one. Um, so that was the last thing that I bought in Nice. That is everything for this video. So this has been my Disneyland Paris, Paris and Nice haul all rolled into one. A lot less than I would usually buy on holiday but as I said I was in the headspace of being on my no buy and trying not to buy excessively because of that so um, I feel like I did all right in terms of in the context of my no buy but I know it's maybe not been the most exciting haul and there's been a lot less than there would usually be in like a Disney haul here in my channel. If you do like Disney content and you're not subscribed already please do hit the subscribe button. I am going on a Disney cruise later this year, which I am so excited about. So I'll definitely be vlogging that and there'll be a haul video as well. And I'm also this close to booking California for next year for the original Disney park. I was waiting to see what the offers would be for Walt Disney World, but I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're that great. So I, th I think I'm leaning towards California for next year. If not California, I will end up in Disney World next year. So there'll be videos anyway, but yes, later this year I'm going on a Disney cruise. So there will be vlogs and hauls from that. So please do hit subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for spending this time with me today. I really appreciate it. Next week I will be sharing the next update for my 2023 project pan. So do make sure to look out for that and I will see you in that video. Bye.